suddenly emerge in your your uh, your book, and I just wondered uh, how you let yourself d decide uh, what in the moment things are good for your books and what are good for your privacy. Well, most of mine are lies, so. <laughs> Lies? Well, yeah, you don't believe all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I believe every single word. It's, 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 it's I mean, there's no Buster Brown Museum? <laughs> there was a Buster Brown Museum, and it was at that address. I don't exactly know when, you know, it was like I was looking up this in a book by Maurice Horn, and it was just like a non sequitur in the book. He just said that there had been a Buster Brown Museum at that address. And yeah, I did go over to the address, and yes, it was the Armenian Embassy. <laughs> you know, the lies don't start till really about that point, then it starts to, uh, you know. Here you go. Um, a lot, there's a lot of lies in my stories, too. Um, I think that I think the the actual stuff is the stuff that sparks the stories, the image or or memory that that resonates that that has lights coming out of it, you know, that I can't let go of, and then the story jumps off from there. So I don't I don't ever feel like I'm revealing truly personal stuff because the stories are made up. It's just flashes of reality, I guess. Um, so, Megan, in your talk, you talked about how Ozu is an influence for you, and you kind of saw his stuff and something resonated in you, and you said, oh, wow, yeah, I want to talk about that too. And I guess this is a question for both of you. On a broader kind of intellectual, cultural, aesthetic level, what are your influences, either inside or particularly outside of comics? Well, a lot of movies. And, you know, it's interesting that Megan brought up Ozu because I've been hearing about him and I'm really curious to see some of his films. And, uh, you know, all kinds of movies, all kinds of books, just walking around in the world with my eyes open, you know. It's, uh, you know... What's what's in the paper every day? It, it, it's all feeding the machine. But what about this Ozu guy? Uh, um, well, I mean, he has he has such a he has such a strong aesthetic, and and as much as I would like to steal that, I haven't been able to. <laughs> but but his his concerns and his and just the sort of emotional tenor of his movies. D definitely, I, it it made it. I had that Julie Doucet moment. Just like here is an artist who's doing what I ex what I want to do, what I'm attempting to do, and I feel the same way about Alice Munro um, and her stories. Um, but I think in terms of influence, I think those come much earlier. You know, before you even really have a choice, and I think most of the the kind of visceral influences that I don't have any control over are more um, the illustrators of the children's books and the writers of the children's books that I read, the picture books that I read as a kid. I think that's the stuff that's forever lodged up there. Um, Maurice Sendak and Dr. Seuss and um, Little House on the Prairie and Garth Williams and E.B. White and all that stuff. You speak up. Say something. Okay. So, Megan, I was a little curious. Um, where where did the idea of the artichoke people species come from? It came from a doodle. Um, it was summertime, I remember, I think maybe 94 or 93, and I just drew these little artichoke people whenever I was talking on the phone or, and it was totally like the little, the Jolly Green Giant has this sidekick 
little sidekick called Sprout, and it was I was basically riffing on Sprout, and I just had so much fun drawing those little artichoke heads <laughs> that I decided, well, you know, I should do a little story about them because they're so much fun to draw. And before then, I'd always been much more um, the stories had come from writing for me before that, and. And that first artichoke story, Penny Royalty, was the first comic I did that that emerged out of a drawing, which was really exciting to me because it made me feel like, wow, maybe I'm really a cartoonist now, starting with an image. It was a big step, so it was a doodle. Any more questions? All right, well, thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you to Kim Deitch and Mike, uh, Megan Kelso. They're going to stick around and answer any questions you might have personally for them, and they'll sign books for you. Upcoming events are at strandbooks.com. Thank you all for coming tonight. <laughs>